channel. Is it streaming right now? Or? Yes. Oh, okay. Very cool. All right, we are live. Nice. All right. Chris gave me the all clear, so we are live and hopefully going to be staying live for the rest of the uh, about hour or so that we're going to be broadcasting. But we have a parade of pens, and it's pre-Thanksgiving. It is Wednesday. Um, so we are going to show you not only the top five pens of November 2020, I know it's a little early to do that, especially with like, you know, Cyber Week hasn't been finished yet, but we already have a pretty good sense of where the top five pens are going to be finishing up. So um, we're going to go over those. We're going to do giveaways on certain items. So stay tuned for that because you'll be able to enter these giveaways by answering quiz questions. I'm going to throw a quiz question at you. You answer it in the chat and in the comments, and then we'll pick some. We'll pick people at random to win each of the individual prizes that we'll have quiz questions for, and then we'll announce those winners come Tuesday on the YouTube channel in the community tab. So keep in mind of that if you're interested in who wins in the community tab on the Gold Spot Pens YouTube channel is where you could find the winners, and that's same thing with uh, last time's. Uh, it, for we did this in. Uh, earlier in November for the Fountain Pen Day, and it was such a fun time, and it was such a great time that we had with you guys that we wanted to do it again. So uh, today, let's go with the top five. So we'll start off with the top five pens, and then we'll also we'll work our way to the new exclusive, nah, well the new Gold Spot exclusive, and then also some new additions that we have from Visconti and Bennu. So uh, without any further ado. Uh, this list of top five pens is generated by likes, comments, and customer reviews on goldspot.com. It is not my own personal top five list, nor is it a greatest list of all time. It is a list created by you, the fine people of the pen community. November 2020, so let's go. First up on our list is the Caveco Sport in the transparent classic blue. This is a Brand new release that we actually dropped November, uh, in, in early November for Fountain Pen Day. This is made by Kaveco in Germany. It's a pocket fountain pen, and uh, it was essentially just one of the most uh, popular pens, even though it's number five out of our top five list. It is one of the most popular pens in terms of volume because these are uh, relatively inexpensive at $25 a piece. Uh, they have a number five size stainless steel nib, and as you can see, they have the Caveco Sport branded on the one side, which you would see common to all other sport pens, uh, but on the other side, they have Gold Spot on here. So, uh, feedback already has been really positive about these pens, and people love the, the dark blue color. Uh, they love the ability to choose between the uh, silver or the gold uh, plated trims. Uh, to match your style, so it goes nicely with either or. Um, but one of the things that we had gotten some uh, comments about was the fact that it's been branded with Gold Spot on here. And I just wanted to quickly explain that actually it wasn't our choice. Um, Caveco, what they wanted to do was uh, provide a way to uh, essentially separate their products that were being made exclusively for retailers or certain markets um, from their main uh, products that Caveco themselves offer. So, it, it, you know, for example, a normal sport, um, a, a, a sport that is available worldwide, is uh, is something that does not have this uh, corporate branding on it. However, something that is made specific for a retailer or a particular market would have a, a unique branding element. So this personalization is kind of uh, dis makes this distinguished from all other Caveco pens that uh, are made in this model or otherwise in other models. So um, one of the neat things about the Caveco Sport is that you can fill it three ways. You have an ink cartridge here to start, so this is an international size ink cartridge. You could also use a, a Sport piston converter, which is unique to uh, this particular type of pen. And then you could also silicone grease the threads on the section here and then fill the entire barrel with fountain pen ink to convert it to an eyedropper fill pen. Uh, quite a few different nib sizes available with this. So you have extra fine, fine, medium, broad, and double broad nibs, which is actually surprisingly popular uh, for this model. 
And it also, I don't have it here, but um, there's also a pocket clip that you could purchase separately so that you could have this attached to your uh, clip, clip it to your pocket or a bag and whatnot. So it's a really nice, compact, portable fountain pen um, that has a really reliable stainless steel nib. Um, they're made half and half from either Yovo or Bach. Uh, sometimes it's, you know, six. Oh, we're back. Oh, we are. It's the Wi Fi. Oh. Okay. Chat. Let us know in the chat. Chris is uh, is trying to rush the page and seeing if the, the stream is still live or not. Yeah. Let us know in the chat if this is going or if it's not going. Really pixelated. And now it's about you. Dude, technology, man. It's great, but... <laughs> That's why we do these things with uh, with the camera and record it and then edit it because when it's, it's live, you can never really depend on it that much. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, and we're going to salvage this, I guess, right? We'll just, you know, I guess we'll just keep rolling. Um, I don't know if I finished up talking about the... Kaveco Sport, uh, but we'll finish up with a quiz. So, to win one of these Kaveco Sport Classic Blue Transparent Fountain Pens, you have to answer this question. And the question is, in what year was the Heidelberg Dip Factory, Dip Pen Factory, which would soon be named Kaveco, founded? So, in what year was the Heidelberg Dip Pen Factory, which would soon be named Kaveco, founded? Let us know in the chat, put it in the comments, and be entered to win one, your choice, either the silver or the gold trim, uh, Kaveco Sport in the transparent classic blue. So that is that. Moving on to number four, we have the Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero in the Bougainvillea Purple. This is an exclusive, this is a second limited edition exclusive pen that we've, uh, that we've produced with Leonardo. Uh, in Italy. This is um, a similar type of material as the Delfino, uh, however it's a purple. So it, it has the same sort of transparency, uh, translucency in some parts, and, and whirliness that you could see through in certain parts of the resin. It's quite beautiful, it's quite uh, a, a, a nice color, very pleasing sort of lilac uh, purple color. And it's named after the Bougainvillea uh, flowering uh, vine plant that uh, is apparent in the Amalfi Coast. Uh, it's, it's known for uh, this, this uh, very beautiful purple color that you would see wrapped around uh, buildings and over uh, trellises and uh, walkways and things like that. It just adds to the overall vibrancy of that uh, beautiful vista uh, coastline that um, and so many other things are named after with the Leonardo brand, like Positano and and whatnot. So, uh, okay, Wi-Fi on. Say something. Something. Say something. Oh, there we something. go. We're back. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Um, so. Talking about the Leonardo Officina, this is the Bougainvillea Purple. Uh, we limited the first 30 of them. We're in rhodium trim. We are waiting for the second uh, batch. The 35 units that we are waiting for are going to be in uh, rose gold trim. So it has a stainless steel nib. Um, that is a Bach number no. 6 stainless steel nib. It is available in extra fine, fine, medium, broad, or a 1.1 millimeter stub. And when we get them in the rose gold, it will be available in that same... Uh, nib configuration. It is a cartridge converter mechanism filling pen. So you have a threaded converter here that has the uh, Leonardo uh, signature sort of uh, cap on the piston knob that's here. And it fills either by this, uh, which includes, um, which is included with the pen or with international size ink cartridges. You could access it either from the front section like so, or you could access uh, access the piston mechanism uh, of the converter 
by unscrewing the blind cap as well. So it's a neat little feature about Memento Zero pens, uh, about Leonardo's uh, cartridge converter filling pens in general. Uh, this uh, particular model is sold out. However, you will have an opportunity if you go to the uh, Cyber Week special blog post on goldspot.com to enter for a chance to win this particular prototype uh, pen that I have here. Uh, it does say on the barrel has the Leonardo Officina Italiana Proto Zero Zero. So this is a this is a rare one-off prototype uh, fountain pen. It doesn't even have which the main production model has like a little uh, bougainvillea flower sort of icon engraved into the back of the cap. This does not have it. Um, so this is truly a one-off uh, unique uh, fountain pen, and you can enter for a chance to win going into our blog. So hold off on doing that right now, though, because we'll watch the rest of this, and then you could go on to our, our blog post and be, at, be able to enter it in there, too. So that's number four of our top five. Number three is a grail-worthy Pelican M800. This is the brown-black special edition model introduced last year. Uh, this is part of our weekly dip special that is actually expiring today at 2 p.m. And we have this for actually 50% off, which is a great value for a pen that uh, for many really consider this as a top of the line choice uh, for pen collectors and for pen aficionados, uh, people who are fans of Pelican pens or people who are fans of you know fountain pens in general usually go to a Pelican 800 as like your top of the line uh, best choice fountain pen that caps off your collection and has shown that you know you are have have like the best of taste when it comes to uh, excellent fountain pens and the reasons why you'd have that is that pelican just has like a classic timeless quality to their pens the souverain collection is uh, is like their flagship collection essentially uh, where it takes a lot of the characteristics of uh, the most formal of Pelican pens and just really amps it up, uh, gives this pen a, a nice size, a great weight with the brass piston mechanism that's inside of this pen. And just overall, uh, also the larger 18 karat gold nib um, that has a, it's a custom uh, proprietary Pelican nib, uh, bicolor, looks awesome on this pen. Uh, has a little uh, pelican bird and the baby chick in there. Uh, this is a broad point, and usually these pelican nibs, they write exceptionally smooth, they're wet, and, uh, and tend to run a little bit thicker than most European style type nibs. The uh, body on this pen, which is kind of like the main calling card visually of the brown black, is made out of uh, cellulose acetate. So these are stripes of cellulose acetate that uh, I think they're made uh, by an Italian manufacturer and then they're brought in in sheets. Uh, we saw them produce these in Germany last year in the Pelican factory and they have sheets that they cut down to smaller rectangles and then form the, the, the bind that wraps around the barrel. And, uh, and then they finish this particular version off with an extremely dark brown resin in the cap grip section and the piston knob it's just it's just a beautiful pen overall very classy looking very nice for fall I would say because you know, the brown and gold uh, really do remind you of the, the let's say falling leaves and uh, just the warmth and um, you know the the tones of the of autumn uh, is just very nice on here uh, the I'm just looking at my notes um, so these uh, these were available on our weekly dip special in fine, medium, or broad, extra fine, already sold out. Uh, they also are included in a really nice looking gift box as well. So this is a great uh, gift idea for the pen connoisseur because it has an overall packaging that just really speaks to the level of pen that you're getting. Uh, so you have a very large gift box. You have a little leatherette pen holder that's in here with the Pelican seal and plastic. Uh, then you have a little tab that opens up and you get to the warranty stuff and whatnot underneath. So um, overall, it's just, if, if you're interested in getting a Pelican pen to really cap off your collection, or if you've always been interested in the Souverain, uh set of pens, 
this is a remarkable, uh, beautiful, elegant pen uh, to add to the collection. And like I said, it's 50% off on our weekly dip special, which is ending at 2 p.m. today. So it will go back up in price. Uh, so lock them in right now. And uh, that's the reason really why that this had shot up today. Even though it's a special edition from last year, it shot up this month because of the, uh, the weekly dip special giving an extra bit of an incentive to collect this pen. On uh, number two on our list, we have our Gold Spot exclusive Sailor Pro Gear British Racing Green. This is a, uh, like I said, it's a Gold Spot exclusive. Uh, this is a design that we worked with uh, Sailor on all throughout last year. We went back several times and uh, really wanted to get this right in terms of capturing the British racing green color that's so iconic in uh, in the racing world. So the barrel and cap have a have a mostly translucent. It's it is it is opaque. I mean, it's certainly not going to be as transparent as the grip section. Um, but I just wanted to show you a little a little parlor trick here with the uh, with the phone is that you could actually see through that cap. It's not completely opaque. It's somewhat transparent, or it's translucent, I should say. But the finials, of course, are, are much clearer. But, um, but we paired it with uh, the colors that we did because we wanted to give this pen a very formal and uh, racing-inspired style. Um, but we didn't want it to be plain either. Like, we wanted to, to kind of have a little bit more of that dynamic feel and it just it just really was impressive um when we first got these pens in i remember seeing them and just saying like oh well it kind of looks nice you know uh it doesn't really jump out as like a pen that's very opulent um but the more that it just sat around on my desk the more i kept taking looks over at it i was like that is a really good looking pen the uh trims are done in rhodium finished uh metal you have the sword-like uh, Sailor 1911 uh, Sailor clip. You have the top finials here. Have the Sailor anchor logo, and you have the cap bands are the thicker uh, metal bands that say Sailor founded 1911, and then the calling card of the Sailor Pro Gear and 1911 lines are the 14 karat and 21 karat gold nibs, respectively. Uh, these are some of the best fountain pen nibs in the world. Uh, not only does Sailor manufacture them for themselves, but Sailor also manufactures them sometimes for, let's say, Cross, for the Cross Peerless, or for Monte Grappa uh, for certain uh, designs of their pen, because it is uh, these these nibs are have such a great quality control. Uh, they have a preciseness about them that is so unique to them that uh, their their feel and their writing ability is um, is one of the most distinguishable characteristics of the writing experience when it comes to a sailor pen. Uh, they are available in a wide array of different nib sizes. So you have seven different nib sizes. However, in the uh, Pro Gear regular, the 21 karat gold nib, um, we've already sold out of a few different nib sizes. So I think extra fine, I wanna say like broad. Uh, there's a couple of nib sizes that wasn't really expecting that would sell out first, but um, they did. Uh, so in terms of availability, these are starting to actually sell out in certain nib sizes. However, we do still have a good variety left. We have extra fine, fine, medium fine, medium broad, zoom, and music available. So uh, in both the 14 karat and the 21 karat gold. Um, if you are looking for a comparison, um, we do have 1911 versus, uh, 1911S versus 1911L comparison. We also have, uh, if you look at the Pro Gear Lucky Charm, uh, there's a lot of comparisons regarding the different model sizes and writing ability in that one as well. Um, we also have a Sailor Nib size comparison, so you could see all the seven different nib sizes written one after another to see which one would fit best with your handwriting. Uh, I, I would just give kind of my general um, advice when it comes to Sailor is that if you've never tried a Sailor before and uh, size isn't really that much of a concern, I would go with the Pro Gear Slim first 
um, because it is such a big jump in price to the regular size and the 21 karat gold nib and it's just for a very small amount of difference in overall size and the quality of the writing experience that I think that if you jump in to the brand and not having any experience at all, try the Pro Gear Slim first. But if you're a person who likes larger size pens, and let's say compare it against the M800 here, you might want to consider just going straight off to the Pro Gear regular because the, the Slim is going to be a little bit too small for you. Um, just comparing them all here together. So, um, but overall, it's it's one of our uh, best-selling pens that we've had this month, and uh, it's easy to see why. It's a great, classy-looking pen. I'm just grabbing my notes here. Oh, and uh, just want to talk about, too, before we go on to the number one of the month, is to look at yet another sailor pen that was introduced this month and this is the 1911 Loch Ness Monster. This is a North American exclusive, so this isn't exclusive to Gold Spot. This is uh, something that is available in the North American market. Uh, this follows up with the Wicked Witch of the West and with the Pirate's Delight? No, it's Life. um, what was it called? Pirate's Life. Oh, Pirate's Life. Also Pirate's Delight. I guess it would be their delight too if they found buried treasure. Uh, but uh, but this follows more in line with the Wicked Witch of the West because it has the dark uh, blue resin and it has the blacked out ruthenium or black ion plated trim here and the black ion plated nib. So it, it, it has a mysterious sort of dark quality to the pen and uh, available in both this 1911 standard and the 1911 large size. So similarly to the British Racing Green Pro Gear, you have two different sizes, two different nib styles. And that looks like a nice little shot right there with all the, the nibs out and all lined up there. Wasn't really intending on that, but um, same principle applies with the Pro Gear as it does with the 1911. So if you really don't, haven't had any experience with the Sailor brand, I would probably go with the 1911S. It still is a fairly, you know, average size type of pen. Some people might consider it a little bit on the smaller side. I think it's okay for either men or women. I think it's adaptable for like a normal size hand, but if you prefer a larger pen, more full-sized, full body type of pen, this is going to give you more of that girth, that, that weight, and the length that uh, you might you might enjoy. Also, the, the nib being a 21 karat nib, uh, carries a bit of a more smoother, more responsive writing experience than the 14 does. Um, but it's something that once you have experience with the 14, you'll notice the difference with the 21. And it's a very, very uh, subtle difference, but when you're writing with pens for a long time and you've had a lot of experience with writing uh, with Sailor pens, then you come to appreciate and really enjoy the, uh, the, the subtleties of that 21. And then also, too, is if you went to, let's say, the King of Pen level, it's a whole other story, which we're not going to get into because these pens are only available in the 1911S and the 1911L. Uh, so uh, that is a brand new release from Sailor, just uh, just arrived, I think, last week or so, and uh, it's it's been it's been pretty good so far. It's been very enjoyable to see uh, these new additions that they come up with, these crazy themes, right? Like uh, you know, Loch Ness monster and you know, Pirate's Life and Wicked Witch of the West. I don't know what they're going to be coming up with next, but you know, we'll see. So it'll be interesting to see where that goes. The um, last but not least, their number one pen of November 2020 is the Retro 51 Tornado Gold Spot Exclusive Twilight Snowfall. This is a design that um, we wanted to have one last final hurrah of a limited edition retro pen um, that incorporates the feelings of the season. Um, and it's it's inclusive. It's a it's a pen that is just really about capturing that that feeling that uh, that watching snow, uh, the beauty of of snow, the magic that it kind of has to capture the imagination, the pliability of it in terms of it being not only a nuisance to commuters but also a joy to kids and to those that play in it. Um, it it's just it's just such a a dynamic, uh, fun pen. Um, we decided to go with our ombre theme, going from a dark blue to a light icy blue, and then threw on top of it 
an overlay pattern of snowflakes in varying colors of which the white snowflakes will glow in the dark when you charge them. So uh, you have to, when you receive this pen, you take it out of the box. And if you really want to get it to glow in the dark really quickly, you would take it and put it underneath, let's say, a uh, desk lamp or what I've shown people before too, is you could use your, your cell phone light, charge it, run it over with the cell phone light. Did you want to do like a... Let's see if we can do it. We could maybe, we could maybe try to do that. Even a little bit. We could try, we're going to try to get the, uh, the glow in the dark to work here. So we'll charge it up. It's kind of like toasting a marshmallow. It's kind of dark right now, right? Yeah. Let's see, let's turn it off. <laughs> that venue was glowing. Oh, the bed, yeah, the bed was glowing, so. <laughs> So you can kind of see it a little bit. I got I just, it. I got it. Yeah, I yep. just kind of just did it really quickly. Um, but it's this Ben who's been sitting here for a while, so um, it has can a you lot hold of it more. Up to me more. I actually am picking it up. Nicely. Cool. Great. Awesome. Turn back on the lights. Yeah, so this is um, so this is a fun pen. It, it kind of incorporates elements of the previous uh, special editions that we've done with retro, being the uh, the ombre. Which I'm getting ink all over my hands right now. Um, so it has the there's the ombre element. There's the glow in the dark element that was uh, incorporated with our skyline series. So this is kind of like the marriage of those concepts. And uh, we decided because we know that retros have been collecting like crazy. People have been snapping up limited editions. Uh, really quickly. So if there was an edition that came out, there was like 300 pieces usually be sold out in like 15 minutes or something like that. I've been seeing uh, retailers kind of do that and run with them really quick. Um, however, uh, we knew being that the theme of it and the timing of it being released, we wanted people to buy this pen for not only for themselves, but for collecting purposes, but uh, for presents. Uh, you know, and we decided let's do 1225 as a limited edition number and just have at it. Buy as many as you want to, that's fine. You know, like, people on eBay are gonna do what they wanna do, but we still have hundreds of these things. So, and it's been around for a couple of weeks now, um, so there's plenty of time, I think, if you wanted to, let's say, wait until the end of the week, if you wanted to see what was available for our Cyber Week specials and see if you could add this to your order, you still have some time, so don't worry. Uh, we still do have plenty of available. We also have the uh, cases are commemorative too, so they kind of match this theme. Yes, Chris. Uh, quick question from Jackie Parkins. Is it gel or ballpoint? Um, well, as you can see, it's starting to come to my hands, Jackie. Um, so this is a, this includes the Ref 5P, which is a capless rollerball cartridge. Um, so this I would consider to be like a gel ink cartridge because it is capless, so it's not like a true rollerball. Um, however, it does have inside uh, kind of like a big sponge and in this sponge is where all of the ink is it's absorbed in the sponge so if you wanted to um, there is a hack on the on our YouTube channel where you can actually take this refill apart and you could fill it up with fountain penning which is pretty cool so it is it is kind of like a gel but not really um, you could swap this out though with a Parker style ballpoint refill um, but when they come when they come packaged they come packaged with the rep 5p uh, black ink cartridge. I'm trying to put this nose coat back on with the spring and everything. Yeah, so I'm, I had it out and I was handling it, so I got some black ink on my fingers and that's why I got it there. Uh, but each of these pens are engraved, numbered on the top ring, and then at the very top disc, you have a snowflake that actually glows in the dark as well. So that snowflake actually glows in the dark. Um, and we, we spent just a little bit extra just to have that um just a little behind the scenes thing it was like it was like not that much more cost wise to add that in but we were like you know what we got to do that so that is your top five uh for november of 2020 oh and we do want to give away one of these pens uh with a quiz question right so uh 45 dollars though if you do want to purchase this pen if you want to enter for a chance to win a Retro 51 Twilight Snowfall. 
you have to answer this question and put it in the chat or in the comments. What is the name for a macro scale extra tropical cyclone in the western North Atlantic Ocean? That may sound really complicated, but for people in New Jersey, we see them all the time and there's a common name for them. So if you know what that is, put it in the chat box or in the comments and enter for a chance to win one of these pets. So that doesn't end all the giveaway stuff that we have planned. We want to do some more uh, fun pens and giveaways. So that is our top five for this month. And we'll put these away for just a second. And uh, we'll talk about our latest Gold Spot Pens exclusive, which just launched today, which is this from Monteverde. So this is the Monteverde one touch engage in turquoise swirl and we'll offer this one up as a giveaway as well you might have seen a little teaser of this pen in our instagram and twitter facebook posts earlier today uh, with the christmas village scene this is a swirly blue acrylic looks really nice it has some levels of translucency through the material there, but plenty of like that chatoyance, a little bit of that sh uh, sheening sparkliness about it. And you might be saying to yourself, oh, another rollerball pen, Tom. Why, why are you guys doing a rollerball pen? Why is, it, why is it a fountain pen? Hey, did you know that the one touch engage is actually sort of like a fountain pen? And I'll show you how. So I'm unscrewing the front section here to reveal the ink ball mechanism. So this ink ball mechanism has a spring to attach uh, to to provide tension for the retraction mechanism. But fountain pen users will recognize this little guy right here is a screw in Schmidt K5 converter. Now, where's the rollerball refill, Tom? You're not you're not telling me that this actually fills with fountain pen ink. Yes, I am telling you it fills with fountain pen ink. It does. So it fills with either bottled fountain pen ink. Or it does also include, amongst other things in here, uh, an ink cartridge adapter. So it allows you to retract and, uh, you know, be able to put this into the... So you'd be able to use international style ink cartridges with this pen, as well as bottled ink. So pretty cool to be able to use fountain pen ink, especially the adaptable international size uh, type refills with this pen. And you might have seen this before with other uh, styles of this particular uh, Monteverde Engage pen. Um, this isn't the first time that you've seen an Engage. Um, they've been introduced in various other styles. However, this is the first time that's being introduced in this nice uh, solid blue swirly acrylic, which is exclusive to Gold Spot pens. It's available. Uh, 100 pieces were produced of this pen. They are not numbered, but they are limited. So. We're going to give this a little go just to show you an example of how this works. So uh, basically, like a fountain pen, you would uh, have the converter attached and you would dip the, uh, the rollerball unit in here. And this ink that I have... Connected again. Wait for the iPad. To be back and then retrans to Wi Fi. That's not like, like bad internet connection over here. <laughs> so we have pretty solid internet, internet connection. It's just, I don't know. It's yeah. weird. We're back. All right. Okay, so I was putting back together after filling this pen up. I'm going to put the front section back on. I'm going to slide the barrel over. To twist the barrel back on and then I have myself the retractable Monteverde Engage. We'll just test it out here. Oh, it's also called the One Touch Engage, but we'll just say turquoise. And then the ink is Robert Oster Silent Night. 
I just swabbed this ink yesterday, so we should probably have like pictures on the website shortly. So I would say that this line probably provides, I would say like a, right, probably like a 0 0.7 millimeter line. It flows nicely and that rolling ball just keeps right up with the ink flow. How's the weight? Some people are wondering about the end cap and if it's heavy at all. No, no, the weight is great because it, it, despite it being mostly like a very long cylinder, it does carry most of its weight towards the front end. And it does, it does kind of flare out, you know, kind of balloons towards this front section here. Um, and it's, it's really nice to grip it uh, because of that little extra bit of girth that's at that section. So, you know, overall, it's, it's a really nice, pleasant pen to hold. Um, and it's kind of has a, a little bit of that vanishing point feel where it, it already is a longer pen to start with. So it has that balance that doesn't require you to have to like post anything on the back to feel pretty good in the hand. Yeah, so uh, this pen, we're going to give, be giving away one uh, as we've been doing with these quiz questions. So the quiz question for this, oh, and I, I forgot to mention, um, so this is on sale on the website. If you want to purchase this pen, we have a hundred available in this style and it is uh, on sale for $75.95, $75.95 on sale. And if you'd like to win one, answer this quiz question. So what was the name of Goldspot's first Monteverde exclusive fountain pen? The first one that we've ever produced with Monteverde. And this you might have to do a little bit of digging for. Uh, you know, I wanted you guys to work a little bit not make these questions so obvious so um and you'll be surprised because uh we've been in the exclusive game for a little bit longer than uh maybe some of the other retailers have been churning out exclusives for so uh we've uh had this particular uh model in other styles however we've never had it in our own exclusive we have made a monteverde exclusive before what was its name put it in the chat box comments and enter for a chance to win this pen so, next we have a super sparkly, glittery set of pens. I think these are great, by the way, for like, for, particularly for Christmas gifts, because especially if you're the type that likes the over-the-top, like, you know, beautiful Christmas lights, the flashing lights, the animatronic stuff, the... The, the cards that have glitter in them, please don't use cards that have glitter in them. I just, I can't stand the fact when you open up a card and just like poofs and get everywhere, glitter gets everywhere. However, the glitter on these Bennu Euphoria pens never get on your hands, which is something that I really like about them. So we have the Euphoria line, which is brand new uh, to us. I have all the, the kind of the clips are out here, but um, we have, it's such a beautiful array of different styles that I think accommodate pretty much anybody's taste uh, for something that's colorful. And as we were showing you before with the glow in the dark, um, this one right here was just, it just lit up when we had it, when we had the lights off. Um, so there's a couple of them that are actually luminous. Um, that's what they call them. So it's instead of glow in the dark, there's, there's three versions. I think all three of them are right here. Um, that have ends which are glow-in-the-dark. Um, and as you saw when we were making the uh, Twilight Snowfall glow-in-the-dark, um, these guys were just like radiating glow. And if, but if glow-in-the-dark's not your kind of thing, it's not really going to appeal to you. Um, there's a lot of different styles here, and they kind of blend the idea of uh, super glittery, chunky uh, sort of glitter with this sort of swirlescent uh, material that just has like a, su a super sheen. I mean, the colors on these things just, they're just like, they pop. They're s like just so astoundingly like vibrant. Um, it's so unique. These are uh, cast acrylics that are made uh, by Bennu in Russia. Um, I, I really feel that this line has matured quite a bit. 
And this is, I feel, like the first pen that really has intrigued me as like a, a pen that uses the signature Bennu style, but makes it into a, a, a form that I think is like one of the, the best pens that they've manufactured so far. Um, because it has, uh, it has a number six style, and this is a Yovo nib. This is something that, you know, you would tell from like looking at the feed. That's a, that's a definitely a Yovo feed. However, it says Schmidt Germany, but Schmidt actually makes their, gets their nibs made uh, by either Yovo or Bach. So these are, these are Yovo nibs. They include, which I don't, that, so they include the uh, standard converter, international size converter inside. Also would take cartridges as well. Uh, like overall, just, I mean, you're looking at this whole entire range, it, it just, just like, there's something I feel for, uh, you know, for anybody who really enjoys a, a, a beautiful, colorful pen. Uh, I mean, even look at this one, this one just kind of like has a, a deep sort of luster about it. Um, and they all have like really nice thematic names. Uh, I don't recall what the names are off, offhand. I know there's one that's called like Black on the Rocks or something like that, but um, some of them are are very just like on par with like what they are trying to accomplish in terms of their uh, overall design style. And uh, and I mean, it's just they're just so fun to look at. It's in a row right now. I just loving how they look. Um, they are available in fountain pen or rollerball. Uh, they are, they are 118 for the non-luminous version of the pens and 128 for the luminous. So if you want the glow in the dark, it's going to cost a little bit extra. Uh, the nib sizes are available in fine, medium, or broad. And like I said, it's a number six style. I'm just curious. I'm going to try it out myself. I want to see if the nibs unscrew from the section or if they, yeah, so they unscrew from the section. So they have a, uh, a collar that's on here, and then you have the whole entire uh, Yovo nib unit. So you could just probably slide this collar off, and or, or you could just pull out the, the friction fit uh, nib unit, and there you go. If you want to switch it with any other number six style nib that you might have lying around there. So that is the Bennu uh, Euphoria available now. We have very small, I mean, we it's a, it's a big line, and we had to just take a whole bunch of pictures, so we don't have like a ton of inventory on them. Um, so a few pieces of each nib size, I believe. Um, so jump on those if you really enjoy a very colorful, uh, very sparkly pen. And next we have a brand new pen from Visconti. So we have, this is the Visconti Voyager. I'll pick up one of these guys here. This is the Visconti Voyager. It is made in Italy and it has a certain signature style that I feel like we've been seeing a little bit more of lately, which is kind of like that, uh, what they call spaghetti resin or spaghetti acrylic, which is uh, taking pieces of acrylic and then sandwiching them together and then being able to produce a pen using the sandwich layers of uh, acrylic. And, uh, and Visconti really pulled this one off very nicely. Uh, so it's not just a straight, um, you know, swirly sort of acrylic. It's, it's kind of got bands uh, that run down the length of the pen. And it reminds me a lot of, let's say the Leonardo Hawaii, like the, the Momento Zero in Hawaii, or let's say the sand finish, um, because it just has that, that patterning that, um, shows like it, it looks like it's made of many little parts. And like, you could see the Chateauians is just kind of turning in the light, um, because those parts are interacting with the light and you would just see these very thin bands of where those pieces of acrylic were sandwiched together. Uh, this is an interpretation, actually, from a pen that was manufactured back in the 1990s uh, called the Voyager. Uh, so this uh, version of it, we've got ourselves a magnetic cap. I'm just taking a fountain pen version. So we have a magnetic pull-off cap. Feels pretty secure that's on here. We have an international-style cartridge converter, of which this one actually has a special type of converter um, that has a metal sheath that goes around it. So if you want to see like the ink level that's inside, it kind of has like a little ink window inside here. Not sure as to what the function of all this is, if it's just kind of like luxury for luxury's sake, but uh, I mean, the additional metal 
you know, it does give this pen a little bit more weight. You have the iconic Visconti Arc spring-loaded clip with Visconti on both sides of that clip there. Uh, There's a very nicely intricate uh, engraved cap band that's here. It says Voyager with a bunch of Vs in, in a pattern here. And then you have uh, on the very top finial here is the My Pen System uh, top uh, little round emblem that's here that actually could be magnetically removed. And then you could put initials, you could put a, a gemstone in it, um, you could personalize it whichever way you'd like. Uh, it's a fairly nice size pen. Uh, it does have a bit more of a weight to it when you have the cap posted on the back end. However, I think writing with it unposted would probably be good too. Um, these nibs here are the 14 karat gold in-house Visconti nibs, and these are uh, rhodium finished. Actually, no, I'm sorry, I think it's white gold uh, for these instead of rhodium uh, finished. Um, but they're available in extra fine, fine, medium, or broad. And as you see here, uh, it's also available in the ballpoint or in rollerball version too. So you could collect all three different styles if you'd like. So uh, Visconti has been uh, pushing this new 14 karat gold in-house nib. And uh, we do hope that over the long run, it provides a lot more in terms of uh, customer satisfaction, uh, reliability, and uh, just out of the box experience for uh, the pen user. Um, as we've seen in the past, um, that has been somewhat, you know, not, not as reliable as it maybe should be, uh, especially for a pen that of this price range. Um, but the 14 carats so far with, let's say, the, um, the, the other editions that have come out so far um, have re been received pretty well. Uh, they've come out of the box uh, writing nicely and uh, as one would expect, especially a, a pen of this price range. So uh, the Visconti Voyager, you have $280 is the sale price for the ballpoint. You have $360 for the rollerball. And then for the 14 karat gold fountain pen, it is $556, and it's available at goldspot.com. We're just putting some fresh new images of it up. I think we have at least one image for every one of them that's there, but uh, truly a nice, colorful pen. Um, that I, I like the names of them, too. It's like Alpha Centauri and, and stuff like that, so it's a, re it's a really nice uh, executed design for this pen, um, and that is the Visconti Voyager. So uh, just to kind of wrap things up, we're going to talk about just the Cyber Week sales um, that we have going on. So um, each day this week, starting on Monday, we kicked off our Cyber Week, which is an accumulating group of deals. So day one, we had the free Edelstein 50 milliliter ink bottle with select Pelican piston fill pens like the 600, uh, 805, 1000, M120, uh, the iconic and the you know the other uh, green historical model. Uh, also the M101N. So there's a lot of different, I mean, a lot of different Pelican pens, sorry, um, that you get, you purchase a piston fill pen like this, uh, like this M800. However, this is not included in that promotion because it's on our weekly dip special. Um, but these pens don't come with any ink. Um, so what we are doing is we're including free ink, 50 milliliter bottle of Edelstein, your choice of what's in stock um, with select Pelican pens. Uh, day two, we had 30% off, so we cut down the retail price to 30% off of all of our uh, Lebon pens. Some of them are even more than that. Some of them are like 40%, whatever. Um, but you could check out our Lebon pens are still on sale. So uh, each day that these deals are released, you'll see that they'll actually carry forward as long as we have stock all the way through to Cyber Monday. So Cyber Monday will be the very last day for all of these deals. So you'll still be able to get Lebon pens at 30% off all throughout the weekend um, or until supplies run out. Uh, and then deal three we have today are our click busters, which is kind of like the weekly dip. So we take all of our all-star weekly dips, our best performing weekly dip pens, of which you might have seen on social media, and we've cut the price down to weekly dip special rates. So like anything like that we had as a previous weekly dip, we went and lowered the price and put them up on the weekly dip page on our website. So you'll see all the different styles. There's at least 30 different pens that are on there and you know, quite a great deal, like especially if you're looking for gathering a whole bunch of gifts that are of great quality there. So, um, we're oh, but we're gonna be taking a break for Thanksgiving. 
So we're not going to be running a new promo on Thanksgiving. We will do one for Black Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then Cyber Monday. So if you want to keep up with everything that's going on, check out our socials. Subscribe to us on, uh, well, not subscribe, but follow us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. And also you can subscribe to our email newsletter at goldspot.com. So you could go and be able to get these deals be sent right to your email inbox and we'll be able to update you as they go along. Um, and you don't like, you don't want to miss out because I mean, we're going to be running all sorts of crazy stuff and it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and that's what I have for right for my sales, but, uh, we want to do some Q, a little bit of Q and a, if Chris is okay with yeah, that. For yeah, sure. So if they're, what, what, uh, what hot topics are people talking about in the chat? Or are they not talking at all and they're just tired of all the technical difficulties? Oh, they're, <laughs> <laughs> they're talking, but we'll wait for uh, a few questions to okay. come in. Right now we have 54 people with us. Okay, cool. So we haven't, we haven't completely, you know, killed everybody off yet with all the, the interruptions in the, in the feed and whatnot. So, um, but yeah, it's, it, it, I don't know. Maybe next time, I don't know what we could do with about the internet connection, about it dropping like that all the time. But, you know, it's just, it's just we're fighting with technology. Sometimes technology is great, but, you know, when you could rely on a nice fountain pen and it works great for you, then, you know, that's, that's, that's the best right there. So, uh, we know that it's, doesn't matter what the Wi-Fi status is when you're writing with, you know, Sailor Pro gear or, or Retro 51 pen. It's just as much as how much ink is in your pen. So, uh, we have, uh, sort of a very broad, non-specific question from Elaine D. What's your favorite pen? At least, you know, right now, maybe. Oh, just like right now, just in general. Yeah. Uh, Elaine, I, I have a group of pens that are like my favorite, favorite pens. And unfortunately, all of them are like at home right now, uh, except for one. So I take one with me to to uh, to the office. And uh, and that one particularly today is a Sailor 1911 Rialo, which is a piston fill uh, Sailor pen. It's got a 21 karat gold nib on it. Um, however, I would probably say my, my fave fave pen right now is um, my Leonardo uh, the, the Memento Zero in the Mediterranean celluloid. It's a, like the Turchese celluloid. It just has a beautiful, uh, lustrous color to the material. It has a unique feel that acrylics and, and resins really don't uh, capture when it comes to celluloid. And just the overall the pen design is, is phenomenal. I have a stub nib on it that just writes like so wet and, and it gives you a nice like broad thick down stroke and really shows off the quality of ink and it's also a piston filler too so uh it's 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 one of my favorites that i go to time and time again michael a asks what's your favorite ink michael a um favorite ink you know i, I keep going back to a sailor ink that i bought a bottle of uh a very long time ago um but it just it just always keeps coming back into my regular use and it's sailor Salton. Uh, it's a part of the Gentle Ink Collection, and uh, it just performs beautifully. It has a little bit of that red sheen, and the color on it, the, the depth of the hue of that blue, is just, it, it always is so fun to look at. And uh, it's great to use in a wide variety of nibs, so anything from like an extra fine all the way through a stub, um, you can still kind of see a little bit of the sheen um, through everything. So it doesn't, you don't have to write with it with a broad or a stub to really enjoy it. Um, so it's like, that's probably my, my favorite. I keep coming back to time and time again. Russell asks, how many pens in your collection? Uh, <laughs> if you have an estimate. My, my personal collection, actually, it, it's surprisingly enough. I have like, I have like nine really solid great pens I have in like a case. So I have like a, like a display case that just houses them, has like a clear top. And what I do is like my mentality behind buying a brand new pen is that if I need to, if I need to enter it into that top like hierarchy of the, the ten pens, then I need to kind of so that way I don't get uh, crazy and I don't have drawers and drawers full of pens I never use. I have like a top ten that's like part of the rotation. I said nine right now because I have one that I'm planning on getting soon, which is a another Leonardo pen. It's the uh, Brooks exclusive um, primary manipulation. Uh, so it's a, it's a beautiful, like swirly, crazy color pen, um, that I'm waiting to come in. That's probably be here in like the next week or so. 
um, which is not only just for me, but it's here general for like Gold Spot. We're going to be getting quite a few of those pens, and hopefully it'll be enough for all the people that want them, because I know that last time uh, we couldn't get our hands on any, and so many people were asking us, oh, well, it's the primary manipulation pens, where's, you know, the Brooks pens, and uh, and we couldn't get any, so, but this time around we'll have some, and, uh, and I do intend on getting one of those, so. Uh, Jackie asks, are there any uh, particular fountain pen ink brands that you prefer for filling uh, roller balls? Oh, so for like filling, like with the, let's say, the Monteverde or, or, or say modding the uh, retros. Oh, like modding with the retros. Okay. Um, well, I mean, see, the thing is with, let's say, like a roller ball like this, like the ink ball, or let's say the retro, is that is that with the very tip, if you could just imagine that the tip kind of looks like... Oh, So the, the tip, you have like a, a ball at the very end. So, so at the very end of a roller ball tip, you just have that little ball and like the ink has to come onto that ball and then roll off onto the paper. So it's not quite like a, a fountain pen nib where like a fountain pen nib, you would just have the, the slit and you would just have the ink channel just con constantly providing ink like that roller ball has to kind of be continually coated in ink. So it's really, we're talking about a very small amount of ink coming through. And I would kind of caution against using anything that's very saturated with, um, with roller ball pens, because I think that it would probably have more, be pr more prone uh, to issues when it comes to flow. Um, whereas a fountain pen, especially if you're going for like a high flow pen, um, that's like a, a, a broad or a stub nib, um, that's going to be laying down a lot of ink. You could rely on it to like throw a shimmer or a saturated ink, and I think you'll be fine with it. Um, but when it comes to like a rollerball tip, uh, like the the Engage, uh, something like the Monteverde ink treatment formula that they have, um, those uh, Monteverde inks are pretty good flow. Uh, Tasha inks have great flow, um, so I would recommend those. Um, I put Robert Oster in this pen because I know that Robert Oster has great flow too, and usually they don't have like even their their uh, sheeny inks um, aren't very saturated, so you don't really have flow issues with them. Um, I have tried, and I've seen people try actually, uh, one person on the Retro 51 Facebook group had done a Diotramentis, I believe it was a Diotramentis uh, document series ink, so something that was actually a uh, waterproof ink and put it in the, the Retro 51 refill. Um, so, so you know, I, I believe that it's capable of handling quite a bit, um, but I would probably caution to stay away when it comes to the rollerball tips, stay away from the shimmer, stay away from the high saturated sheeny inks. Um, go for something that, you know, maybe just a bit more uh, like nicer on the flow end of things. So like something that has like a great flow is a very wet ink. Um, like I mentioned, you have the Monteverde, uh, you have the Tasha is good one, uh, Waterman is good, uh, Robert Oster is another good one. So um, there's a quite a few to choose from in a wide variety of different colors. Uh, how about Irishizuku? Um, Irishizuku, like they tend to have lots of dye in their colors, and uh, you know from what I've heard from a lot of people is that is that those tend to be even though they're like pH balance, um, they tend to be a little bit more on the uh, caustic side, and uh, and you know they do have a lot of bold beautiful colors but um i would probably i would probably like stay away from using those with the the roller ball tip um but if anybody has any experience with using them with the roller tips and and has been fine with using them that way um just you know feel free to like let me know i mean like i'm always open to trying out new and different things but just from what i've heard from other uh instances of like you know that the ear shizuki inks have a lot of dye in them and, uh, and tend to be a little bit more on the saturated side, I would probably caution to not use them with uh, a rollerball tip or, or as the, the rollerball hack for the retro refill. Uh, John asks, if you were to design your own fountain pen, uh, what would you, or what would it be made of in terms of nib, feed, and body? John, that is an excellent question. I've actually talked about this before at some point or another, kind of get a couple of fountain pen geeks together. I talked about this with Penboard Roy actually on a couple of occasions. Um, we, like, like I, what I really like is playing around with ink. And I love the fact that fountain pens allow you to switch 
lots of different inks and that you could get things like sheen, sheen, the shading and sheen on a particular ink and lay it down on paper and get some wild colors. One of the things I really like about Pilot, the parallel pens, is that you could kind of create the gradient color by touching the two tips together. So I would think with, with if I were to make a pen, it's my dream pen, um, that I would love to have a, a pen that allows you to have, let's say, two different colors at the same time stored in the pen, either by piston fill or by like a cartridge converter system, and that you could actually meter out using um, one color versus the other so that you could create those blended effects on the page. And ideally it would be like some sort of wicked flex nib or a stub nib, and uh, maybe the pen, if I'm really going pie in the sky, the pen's made out of celluloid and it just looks gorgeous. Um, maybe 14 karat gold nib so that it has that flexibility built into the nib. Um, ebonite feed so that the feed keeps up, but uh, ultimately that, that one key characteristic being that you would have, let's say, two different colors in the pen and that you could kind of switch and toggle one versus the other and then gradient them back and forth and that would, would be so cool. Like you could turn like a dial or press a button and it would just start pu pushing out that other color of ink. Very cool. Hmm. Nick asks, uh, he has a, a 21 karat nib on his Sailor 1911L. He wants to know what the writing difference is between that and like uh, an 18 karat nib by Sailor. Uh, well, I, I know Sailor makes a few 18 karat nibs. They make them on uh, the, uh, let's say the Cross Peerless. Um, and really the, the difference is going to be so, so very slight. And like I mentioned with uh, talking about the Pro Gear slim versus the regular the 1911s versus 1911l um, even when you're going from a 14 to a 21 um, the difference is so slight especially if you haven't had any experience with a sailor fountain pen before um, that you're going to write with both and be like well what's really the difference i don't know what the difference is but when you when you have that experience and you've written with a 21 before and then you decide to write with an 18 you might say well you know maybe it doesn't feel as like it, I mean, the like sailor nibs are not known for their softness anyway, but maybe like the 18 just feels a little bit more rigid, like or it also depends also too is like is like the actual size of the nib too. So that's another characteristic that that you might have to consider as well. Um, but when when it comes to our average um, lineup of sailor pens, uh, we usually just have the 14 versus 21. Um, However, I think also, too, is that in the new year, we're going to be getting some of the, uh, the custom bespoke nibs, so that's going to be exciting to, uh, to see those nibs uh, available in our collection and also compare them with the other various nibs that we already have. Um, but, uh, but in, you know, I, it's going to be a very subtle difference between a 21 and 18. Um, if, you're, if you're looking for, you know, like a, like a cheaper option, I don't think that it's actually going to... Uh, make that much of a difference, uh, you know, let's say getting one that has a 21 versus an 18, like I think they're probably still going to maintain that same price point between them, so I'd probably just go for the 21. Uh, Manny asks, what nib size would be good for beginners with fountain pens? Uh, that's not our Manny that's in the office, right? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was like, I was like, one of our, you know, one of my coworkers decides to ask a question <laughs> on these things. Um, but uh, for, for beginners, uh, it's I would generally go towards like a fine, and this is the reason why. It's because you can't control usually the paper quality. And if you decide to go with a medium or thicker than that, uh, paper quality comes into play heavily. So you don't want to kind of set them up for a, a terrible experience if they're all they're using is like, you know, cheap copy paper or like a notebook that is, you know, it's like a discount notebook, no name or whatever uses recycled paper. Um, so if you want to set them up with, let's say, something that's a medium or thicker than that, accompany the, the gift with a, a, a Rhodia pad, like this Rhodia pad, or a Claire Fontaine notebook. Something that will be able to handle the ink on the paper. Because if you give them, let's say, a, a broad nib or a medium nib, and they write with, you know, just with composition notebooks, it's going to end up just becoming a mess, where it's, the ink is going to feather, it's going to show through to the other side, it's going to bleed through the other side. Um, and that's just not going to be pleasurable. So they're not going to pick up the pen again because they know it's not going to work for their, you know, for their purposes. So um, usually I would go with a fine because you just really can't control what's going on paper-wise. And that tends to be a pretty good nib size uh, through most brands to kind of lay down just enough ink to 
really show that this is a fountain pen that gives you that, that feeling of that fluid smoothness um, while being able to show some of the ink color on the paper and but yet not be so temperamental with the paper quality. Harish asks, what's the difference between a uh, Sailor Medium Fine and Medium? It's so, so slight. So, so slight. We're talking maybe like two-tenths of a millimeter because it's because you have the grades go from extra fine. So extra fine, fine, medium, fine, medium. So you have between like, let's say extra fine and medium, you have maybe like a one millimeter difference in the line, you know. So, so like an extra, so sailor extra fine is going to be really, really. It's like less than 0.5. It's probably like 0.35, I would say, millimeters in in a, in a line quality, and it's it's going to give you a lot of feedback. So that's another concern that when you're picking nib sizes in sailor is like how much feedback are you willing to tolerate? And feedback is something that sailor's known for in their nibs. Um, it's not necessarily a, a, a terrible thing to feel like it's just that that kind of that scritchiness on the paper um, So the finer that you go though the more of it if there is so if you were let's say Choosing between a fine or a medium fine if you are want to kind of go a little bit towards the smoother side go with the medium fine and if you want to go towards if 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 you're more you know kind of con concentrated on the, the the length of the thickness of the line and that crispness of the line, then you would want to go with a fine or an extra fine because if you want that really ultra crisp thin line, you're not going to get that in the higher nib sizes. You want to get that in like let's say the finer extra fine. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, so I think, I think that's good for now. Yeah. So do you want to wrap it up? Yeah, absolutely. So appreciate you guys. I thank you so much for joining us in our pen parade. We looked at a lot of pens. We talked about our top five for November. And uh, really appreciate you guys tuning in. I hope that you all have a safe and happy Thanksgiving. Uh, like I mentioned before, take a look and, and see what's going on for our Cyber Week deals. Sign up for our email newsletter. Give us a subscribe here. Give us a thumbs up for this video. Uh, would be totally grateful for that. And, um, you know, that's, that's, that's it from us today. So appreciate you guys. Thank you, my friends. Take care. And a happy Thanksgiving. Happy to you. Thanksgiving.